This is a tutorial on evaluating polynomial functions. Well, to evaluate a polynomial function, we first have to know what a polynomial function is. And a polynomial function is a function that can be written in this form, where these a terms are coefficients and constants, and they're multiplied by a variable, in this case x, and that variable has a exponent on it. Now if this is a polynomial function, that means all these coefficients and constants are real numbers. And it also means that all of our exponents, these n's, are all whole numbers. So here are several examples of polynomial functions. Here we have f of x is equal to 10x minus 2, and you can think of this as x to the first power. And because this is x to the first power, we call this a linear function. Here we have f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 7x minus 10. Now we have x to the first power here, but there's a higher power here of 2, and since this polynomial's highest power is a 2, we call this a quadratic polynomial or a quadratic function. Our next example, 12x to the third minus 10x squared plus 1x plus 9, our highest exponent is a 3. So this is called a cubic function, or a cubic polynomial. And then lastly, 2x to the fourth minus 5x cubed plus 2x squared plus x minus 1, our highest exponent is a 4. So we would call this a quartic function. Now some important terminology with polynomial functions. Whatever our highest exponent is, that exponent is called our degree. So the degree of a linear function would be 1. The degree of a quadratic function would be 2. Cubic would be 3 and quartic would be 4. And you can go higher than that. But whatever the largest exponent is, we say that that polynomial function is to that highest exponent's degree. So a quadratic is to the second degree or a second degree polynomial. Now if you go to the term that has the highest exponent, the coefficient on that term is called the leading coefficient. And then lastly, if we write our polynomial function, so our exponent's decrease in order. So look at our quartic function here. We have x to the fourth, and then our next term is x to the third, x to the second, and then x to the first. So they're constantly decreasing. If we write our polynomial function in that form, we would say that it's in standard form. So now that we know what a polynomial function is, let's see if we can identify them. Our first example, f of x is equal to 4x minus 7x squared. This is a polynomial function. I could rewrite this in standard form, and it would look like a negative 7x squared plus 4x, and then there's no constant, plus 0. But all of our coefficients are real numbers, and all of our exponents are whole numbers. So yes, this is a polynomial function. Let's look at our second example. We have f of x is equal to 2x minus the square root of x plus 5. Well, this is not a polynomial function, and that's because of the square root of x. This square root is not a whole number exponent. So because this is not a whole number exponent, this is not a polynomial function. Our third example, f of x is equal to 15, x to the 15th plus 7 is a polynomial function. We could rewrite this as 15x to the 15th plus 0x to the 14th plus 0x to the 13th and so on. And even though all of our coefficients between x to the 15th power all the way down to our constant of 7 are 0, zero is still a real number and our exponents 
15 in this case is a whole number. So yes, this is a polynomial function. Let's look at our last example. We have f of x is equal to 10x cubed plus 2 to the x minus 10x plus 5. Well, this is not a polynomial function because of this term right here, this 2 to the x. Here we have a variable in our exponents where exponents are just supposed to be whole numbers. We don't know what x is, so we can't say that it's a whole number, and therefore this is not a polynomial function. So now that we know how to find polynomial functions, let's talk about evaluating them. Say we were given the function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 7x squared plus 4. And we wanted to know what the value of this function when x is equal to 3. Well, an easy way to evaluate this would be just plug in 3 for x. So we would get 3 cubed minus 7 times 3 squared plus 4. And notice I just plugged in 3 for our x values. Well, 3 cubed is 27 minus 7 times 3 squared is 9 plus 4. 7 times 9 is 63. So we get 27 minus 63 plus 4. And that's equal to a negative 32. So let's try this again. Here we have f of y, where y to the fourth minus 10 to the y plus 2 is our function. And we're asked to evaluate it for when y is equal to 2. So again, we'll just plug 2 in for y. So we get 2 to the fourth minus 10 times 2 plus 2. 2 to the fourth is 16, minus 10 times 2 is 20, plus 2. So this is going to be equal to negative 2. Now there's a second way to evaluate polynomial functions, and that's called synthetic substitution. Now to do synthetic substitution, you first have to write out all the coefficients of your expression. So we have the same expression here, x cubed minus 7x squared plus 4. But when you write out all of your coefficients for synthetic substitution, you have to include the ones that are missing. So I could rewrite this expression as x cubed minus 7x squared plus 0x plus 4. Now we don't typically write the 0x because anything times 0 is 0, but we need this coefficient to do our synthetic substitution. So now that we've written this out, we just write down our coefficients, which are 1, negative 7, 0, and 4. And now that we have our coefficients, we write a upside down division sign that looks something like this. Then on the outside of this division sign, we write the number that we're trying to evaluate the function for. So in this case, it would be 3. Now to do synthetic substitution, the first step is to take your first coefficient, in this case the 1, and you carry it all the way down outside of your division sign. So you have a 1 here. Then the next step is to take that 1 and multiply it by our number on the outside of the division sign, so this 3. So it would be 1 times 3, which is 3, and you take that answer and you write it underneath your next coefficient, so right there. So 3 times 1, goes to 3. Then your next step is to add these two. So you add this negative 7 coefficient and then your new number 3 and this will come out to be a negative 4. Then now that this negative 4 is outside of our division sign we multiply it by our 3 again. So 3 times negative 4 is a negative 12. And again we add that to our next coefficient which is a 0 and that becomes a negative 12. Then we take this negative 12, multiply it by 3 again, and that becomes a negative 36. And then of course we add these again, and we get a negative 32, which is what we had before. So the solution of this polynomial function when x is equal to 3 is a negative 32. So let's try this again. Here we have the same function we had before. It's y to the fourth minus 10y plus 2. 
But again, you have to include your missing coefficients. So I'm going to rewrite this as y to the fourth plus 0y to the third plus 0y to the second minus 10y plus 2. And then you write out your coefficients. So 1, 0, 0, a negative 10, and a 2. Then we need our upside down division sign. And then we need the number that we're evaluating this function for. So in this case, 2. And it goes out here. Now again, our first step is to carry down this 1. So it comes outside. And now that it's outside, we multiply it by our 2. So 2 times 1 is 2. Add these, and we'll get a 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 0 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus a negative 10 is a negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is a negative 4. And then negative 4 plus 2 is a negative 2. So our solution for this polynomial function when y is equal to 2 is negative 2. Well, now that we know how to evaluate polynomial functions, let's talk about how we graph them. Now, a linear polynomial function just graphs as a straight line. And our quadratic, or our second power, graphs like a u. But if we get higher than our second power, we get into our cubics, our fourth degree, fifth, sixth, the graphs get a little bit harder to graph. But we can break down because they all look somewhat similar. So if we have an odd degree, like a cubic or a fifth power polynomial, and a positive leading coefficient, then our graph would look something like this. We start low, we go through a small s or a squiggly, and then we end high. Now if we have an odd degree, so a third or a fifth, but a negative leading coefficient, then we just kind of mirror this graph where we would start high and end low with our little S shape in the middle. Now if we have an even degree, so a fourth power or a sixth power and a positive lean coefficient, we have this kind of a U but it has the squiggly in the middle. But because it's a positive leading coefficient, we start high and we end high. And then if we have a negative leading coefficient on an even degree, polynomial. It's the same graph, it's just upside down, so we end low and start low. Now what's important to realize here is if we had an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient, is we go to negative infinity on the x-axis, our function goes to negative infinity. And as we go to positive infinity on the x-axis, our function goes to positive infinity. But if we take that odd degree polynomial and we multiply it by a negative leading coefficient, then this is reversed. If we go out to negative infinity on the x-axis, then our function goes to infinity. And if we go to infinity, or positive infinity on the x-axis, then our function goes towards negative infinity. Now even degree polynomials are different. As we go to either positive infinity or negative infinity, with an even degree positive leading coefficient, the function always heads towards infinity. But if we have a negative leading coefficient on an even degree polynomial, it doesn't matter which direction we head, whether positive or negative infinity along the x-axis, our function will head towards negative infinity. So now that we know this, we can use this to help us see the shape of other polynomial functions. So let's graph the function 2x cubed plus x squared minus 4x plus 8. Well the first step of doing that is to find some points that lie on this line or on this graph. And to do that we're just going to select some x values. I'm going to pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And we're going to plug these x values into our function and try to find our function values or our y values. So let's start with the first one, negative 2. So our function of negative 2 would be equal to 2, and we just plug in negative 2 for x. 
So two times negative two cubed plus negative two squared minus four times negative two plus eight. Well, negative two cubed is a negative eight and then times two would be a negative 16. And a negative two squared is just a positive four. Four times a negative two is a negative eight, but we're subtracting it, so that's a plus eight. And then we have a plus eight on the end. So the function when x is equal to negative two is equal to four. So I'm gonna put that in our little table down here. And now let's try the next one. The function when x is equal to negative one well, it's two times negative one cubed plus negative one squared minus four times a negative one plus eight. Well, negative one cubed is still negative one times two is a negative two. Negative one squared is a positive one. Negative one times four is a negative four, but we're subtracting it, so we add four and then add the eight on the end and we find out that when x is equal to negative 1 our function is equal to 11. So again put that in our table. Now let's try 0. Our function value when x is equal to 0 is 2 times 0 cubed plus 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 8. Well, all three of our first terms will go to zero because anything times zero is zero. So we're just left with our eight. So our function value when x is zero is eight. Now let's try positive one. We plug in positive one for x. So two times one cubed plus one squared minus four times one plus eight. Well, one cubed is one times two is two. One squared is one. Four times one is four, but we're subtracting it. And then add the eight on the end. We find out that our function value when x is one is seven. Now let's do our last one. When x is two, two times two cubed plus two squared minus four times two plus eight. 2 cubed is 8 times 2 is 16 plus 2 squared which is 4 and then minus 4 times 2 which is 8 and then add the 8. So when x is 2 our function value is 20. So I'm going to put that in our table too. So now I got five points x and y values that I can plot on our graph. So let's do the first one. We have x is negative 2 and y is 4. So we get a point right there. The next one is a negative one on x and y is 11. So that's right about there. Our next one is zero eight. So that's right there. One seven is right about there. And then 220 is way up here. Now let's look at our function. Here we have an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient. Well remember when we have an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient we're going to get a graph that looks something like that. So let's try to connect these points with a smooth curve that starts low and ends high. So it's going to look something like this. And that's how you graph a polynomial function. And that concludes our tutorial on evaluating polynomial functions.